Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV. And I'm really excited to get into these two samples right here. If you're just taking a quick glance, it looks like it's two different uh, wineries altogether, but then you focus in, and what you see is I have two different vintages of Brunello di Montalcino in two different styles. I've got a uh, regular old Brunello and then I've got a uh, Reserva Brunello right here. Um, both from Piccini. This is the uh, Villa al Cortile um, Brunello di Montalcino. So same maker for both of these. Um, these are two vintages uh, right next to each other but both of these wines were released at the same time. A big difference here is we're talking talking about, you know, a different selection of grapes and we're talking about uh, a slightly different aging process. Um, so let's just dive right into these. Again, both these wines are samples. These wines came courtesy of uh, Gregory White PR. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, I'm going to start off with the 2009 uh, Villa Al Cortile uh, Brunello di Montalcino. Uh, again, this is from Piccini is the maker right there, and they're a, they're a heavy hitter in the uh, Chianti uh, region of uh, Italy. Um, so Brunello, you know, the name Brunello, it's kind of a, a play on Bruno, which is a man's name and it means brown. Uh, originally, Brunello was thought to be its own grape uh, grown in the Montalcino uh, region. Uh, and what they found over the course of doing different studies and experiments was that Brunello is the exact same grape as uh, Sangiovese. Just um, in Montalcino, uh, they refer to all their wines that are 100% Sangiovese as being uh, Brunello di Montalcino. So right off the bat, with this 2009, this was aged for 26, 26 months in uh, oak and then six months of uh, bottle aging on top of this. You're noticing right away, I mean, it's it's fairly light. Um, and for a 2009, you know, this is a, 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 an older wine for a newer release. Um, but with that age, you know, there is a little bit of a, a loss of color. You would imagine, you know, a brand new uh, Brunello, like as it's being bottled, would be extremely dark. And so they do kind of lighten up uh, over the years. Really nice, just bright red color there. And, and very light, very light, like I almost, you know, just on the looks of things, you know, seeing my fingers through the glass, it almost has like a Pinot Noir type of sensibility to it. Now on the nose, really just bright and crisp uh, cherry and red apple notes. There's uh, ooh. There's like kind of like a dustiness uh, to the wine. It's very rustic, it's very Italian. There are like some leather uh, notes as well. And really, yeah, like this sour cherry cranberry thing happening on the nose. I mean, it's very bright, very fun type of wine. So let's go right to the palate here. Again, really um, like bright and tart and crisp um, red fruit on the palate to begin with. Really nice bright uh, acidity. Um, there's, you know, there are these um, earthy type of qualities to it. Um, I am getting that soil. I am getting um, these umami type of characteristics. Um, and... There are some really nice tannins there. I mean, this is definitely a a, a bold wine um, that could be aging aged for a while. Um, but you know, it's it's drinking real well right now, and I can imagine that it's something that would uh, continue to be um, a crowd favorite over the next ten years or so, like five ten years or so. I mean, it's it's good stuff. Yeah, just this nice, really bright acid. This guy right here suggests a retail price of 
60 bones, 60. And so this is entry level, Brunello di Montalcino from uh, Puccini, right? Uh, so let's take a look at that Reserva quick and let's see if we can note these differences. So this is 2008, so uh, a year older, a year wiser. This spent 36 months in uh, oak and then again another uh, six aging in the bottle. What I'm noticing here, you know, it, it, it does have that age, so I mean it's not as, as dark as we would uh, initially see one of these wines if, if it were coming out of the barrel. Um, but it's much darker than that uh, entry level. This Reserva, I mean, it's got a, a, a little more meat on its bones right there, just in terms of color. And so I wasn't expecting, you know, I guess a year isn't that much of a difference, but I guess I wasn't expecting this to be so much darker than the other one. Again, 100% Sangiovese, um, but when we talk about the Reserva, we are talking about, you know, select grapes from that vineyard. And again, a little bit more aging in that oak. And there is a price thing going on here. So this is 80 bucks, heavy hitter. Thanks so much for the sample, guys. This is awesome. Um, so on the nose, and this is just big down to earth, you know, where the this Brunello di Montalcino was very much um, bright red fruits on the nose. When I'm getting into this Reserva, just, just earthy wood and dust, not these bright red fruits on the nose. Getting that forest floor Yeah, getting like that mushroomy type of play. Again, like, you know, color-wise and the nose on this one, very Pinot Noir-esque for me. So this is kind of fun. I haven't um, gotten a chance to dig that deep um, into the Brunello di Montalcinos. I'm very happy with what I'm getting so far. I mean, price-wise, it's a little much. But other than that, very happy with what I'm looking at so far. I'm getting a little bit of that like red apple type of play. I'm getting kind of like a, a um, an orange type of citrusy thing, like orange zest. And there are some cherries on the nose as as that initial. Um, you know, I would imagine you'd want to decant these for a little while before you really dive into them. Um, but just on the initial pour and after things are starting to blow off, some cherries and, and apple fruits are starting to show up. And on the palate. This is a killer right here. Uh, both of these are 14% alcohol. Um, both of these very well balanced. Um, what I'm getting here is, you know, those red fruits that were kind of masked on the nose are very much just exploding on the palate. And not to say that it's uh, a fruit bomb type of explosion, but you know, it, it's kind of like a sneak attack. It wasn't there and then it's there. Um, along with it, just there's these just really big, awesome tannins. I mean, this is definitely that, that extra 10 months uh, of oak really gives a lot to the um, structure of this wine. This is very much a, an age-worthy wine where we're talking about this guy going another five to 10. I see this easily going another 10, 15. Um, if you wanted to sit on 20, I think it'd be really fun, but you could just drink it right now. Um, yeah, so really good structure there. Tart red cherries, again that orange zest, I'm getting a little bit of like cola in there, um, really earthy, getting that forest floor, that soil, that mushroom, 
super long acidity. I mean, both of these are very aggressive. Both of these are very aggressive um, in terms of the acidity there, which I really like in wines. And, and especially, you know, here we are in summer, and of course you wouldn't know that because I'm wearing this thing. Um, but here we are in summer, um, and if I am going for a red wine, I really am going for a red wine that's that's got some killer acidity. Um, that even though this is very much an age-worthy type of wine, um, this is also a wine that can let the food that you're pairing with it um, very much be expressed. I don't think this is something that's going to hide your food. I think it's something that's really going to accentuate your food. Um, and I'm really excited to, I'm going to be, you know, over the course of the next day or so, Karen and I will be diving into this. Um, she's making some pasta tonight, so I think that, of course, would go fine with that. Um, you could go with, like, some darker, uh, gamier type of meats. I'm thinking about duck. I think that would be awesome. I wish my wife would make me some duck. I don't think that's going to happen, but that'd be great. Uh, I could see that with lamb. I could see, like... Um, I could also see you laying down like a, I'm thinking lamb and all of a sudden I'm thinking like a gyro. Just like go to your local like Mediterranean fast food type of place, get like some gyro, get some falafel and I think you'd really enjoy that. Um, wow. It's just big. It's big and it's 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 nice and it's full. It's flavorful. I like that. Um, you know, score wise, let me get back into um, the 2009 Primello di Montalcino. And this is very much more of like an acid and, and bright red fruit type of play. Um, and I, again, I think this Reserva is more of, it's got that acid, it's got that bright red fruit, but it's also just rustic and it's structured, you know. Um, both of these, you know, uh, again, I'm thinking these are red wines that really could work for you uh, in the summertime. Barbecue, I think, would be great. I think that the um, the 2009 Brunello di Montalcino, that's going to be the one that you're opening up uh, during the day as you guys are hanging out and grilling. And then at night as that sun goes down and, and you're nice and full and you just want to sit back and just chillax with a wine, I think that the uh, Reserva right here, the 2008 Reserva, um, is really, they're both going to bring you some joy. Uh, Score-wise... For the Villa Al Cortile Brunello di Montalcino 2009 from Puccini, um, oh, this is great. Uh, 91, 91 for this guy right here. For the 2008, Villa Al Cortile Brunello di Montalcina Reserva. What did I say? 91 over here? 92. It edges it out. These are both great wines. Price wise, I mean, this is really something uh, if you've got you know, family that's just really into Italian wine and you kind of want to show off for them. Uh, I think these wines would uh, be great. Um, is this a wine that, you know, it's funny, I say, you know, hanging out with a barbecue. Is this a wine that um, you're just going to break open on like a random, you know, Wednesday afternoon type of barbecue thing? Probably not. I would not recommend that, um, but it would definitely work at like a, a, a bigger family type of get together. I think you'd enjoy that. Um, great wines. Thanks a lot, guys. This is awesome. Uh, what's your favorite Brunello di Montalcino? Leave a message. Let me know what you think. A message, a comment. Let me know what you think. Till next time, everybody, stay rad.
ี้แพนมาดูอาจารย์ครับ